Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're having an amazing day. Let's get right into the stories. The first one is an entitled people story. I had been saving up for years to finally buy my dream car, a brand new fire engine red Porsche Cops. This beautiful machine had a sticker price of over $130,000, but it was worth every penny to me. Ever since I was a little kid, I had Porsche posters on my bedroom walls and dreamed of owning one someday. After graduating college and landing my first real job, I started setting aside as much money as I could every month towards the Porsche fund. I resisted temptation and lived very frugally, rarely going out to eat or taking vacations. Eight long years later, the big day finally arrived. I'll never forget driving my shiny new Porsche off the dealership lot, grinning from ear to ear. I had worked so hard for so long, sacrificing and saving, and now my dream was real. On weekends, I loved taking the Porsche out on long drives along the coast. One sunny Saturday morning, I stopped by a scenic overlook to take in the views. A few other cars were in the small parking lot, including a minivan with a woman and three young kids. I figured they were just another family out enjoying the beautiful day like me. As I stood gazing out at the ocean, I heard the pitter-patter of little feet running up behind me. Cool car, mister, a young voice piped up. I turned to see a boy of about six looking admiringly at my Porsche. I chuckled and said thanks. Kids always got a kick out of seeing fancy sports cars. The boy ran his hand along the shiny exterior. This looks like a race car, he said excitedly. Can I get inside? I hesitated. Normally I wouldn't let a sticky-fingered kid climb into my $130k car, but he seemed harmless enough. I figured it would make his day to sit in the driver's seat for a minute. Just for a minute, okay, bud? I said, opening the door. The boy jumped right in and started pretending to drive, making vroom vroom noises. I had to smile seeing how much he was enjoying himself. After a minute or so, I said, All right, time to let other people have a turn. But the kid totally ignored me and kept driving and mashing the buttons on the steering wheel. Just then, I heard the click-clack of heels rapidly approaching. The boy's mother, who I now realized was the quintessential embodiment of a Karen complete with the asymmetrical bob haircut, stormed up. Excuse me, she huffed indignantly. What do you think you're doing with my son in this car? Confused, I stammered. What? I was just letting him sit in it for a minute. She cut me off. Do you make a habit of luring young children into your vehicles? She said sharply. What? No, I insisted. He just wanted to see the cool race car. Oh, so now you're trying to impress a seven-year-old boy with your fancy toy? She accused. It's not a toy, it's my car, I started to explain before she interrupted again. You men and your absurd midlife crisis mobiles, she scoffed, rolling her eyes. When are you going to grow up and start driving something practical like a minivan? I stood there stunned, unable to get a word in edgewise as Karen continued her tirade. I don't want strange men exposing my son to their ostentatious vehicles and toxic masculinity, she ranted. Now give me the keys so I can take him somewhere safe, away from your negative influence. She held out her hand expectantly, as if I would actually hand over the keys to my $130k Porsche to this crazy lady I just met. I had to stifle a laugh at the sheer absurdity of it. Um, I don't think so, I said incredulously. This is my car that I worked very hard for. I'm not just handing over the keys to a stranger. Karen's face turned red with anger. How dare you, she shrieked. If you don't give me the keys right now, I'm calling the police and having you arrested for endangering my child. Never. She whipped out her cell phone and jabbed her fingers at the screen. That's it. I'm calling cops now. I'll tell them how you lured my son into your car and refused to let him go. You're going to jail, creep. Panic rose in my chest as she held the phone to her ear. This was getting out of hand fast. Wait! Wait, hold on a second! I pleaded desperately. Your son just wanted to see the car. I wasn't doing anything wrong. Please, let's just all take a breath and talk about this calmly. Help, police! Karen cried into the phone, ignoring me completely. There's a dangerous man here threatening me and my child. He forced my son into his car and now he's holding him hostage. My heart was pounding. I couldn't believe this was happening. Before I knew what I was doing, I lunged forward and knocked the phone out of her hand. It went flying and shattered on the ground. Karen let out a dramatic shriek. Assault! She wailed. Did you see that? He assaulted me! She pointed to the other tourists standing around gawking awkwardly. At this point, I probably should have just walked away and let the crazy lady continue her hysterics. But after working so hard for my dream car, I refused to risk having it taken from me. 
or even impounded as police evidence over this woman's delusional lies. So instead, I pulled out my own phone and started recording video. You can clearly see I made no physical contact with this woman, I narrated calmly, as Karen posed and preened for the camera like a bad reality TV star. Get that camera out of my face, she screeched. I'm calling the police. She tried dialing again, but quickly realized her phone was destroyed. Go right ahead and call the police, I told her calmly. In fact, I'll call them myself and show them this video proving you falsely accused me. I dialed cops and told the operator that a disturbed woman was making dangerous false accusations against me and asked them to send an officer to sort out the situation. Soon a police cruiser pulled up. The officer questioned both me and Karen. I showed him the video proving my innocence. He also interviewed the witnesses, none of whom had seen me come anywhere near Karen, let alone assault her. Finally, he turned to Karen. Ma'am, filing a false police report is a crime, he said sternly. Karen's smug attitude instantly crumbled. But, but, she stammered, for once at a loss for words. I suggest apologizing for the misunderstanding and going your separate ways before I have to take this any further, the officer said. Karen glanced around nervously. Realizing she was caught, her shoulders slumped in defeat. Fine, she muttered. I may have overreacted. It was the closest thing to an apology I would get. The officer tipped his hat and drove off. Karen hastily collected her kids and rushed off to her minivan. I happily got back in my Porsche, victorious. I had protected my baby from Karen's delusional entitlement. As I zoomed off, I saw Karen glaring angrily in my rearview mirror. I just smiled and waved as I left her in a cloud of dust. This Porsche and I had been through quite the adventure together already, and I had a feeling many more exciting travels were in our future. For now, we both deserved a relaxing cruise along the coast, smooth sailing ahead. The next one is a pro-revenge story. A recent petty revenge story made me remember this experience from my teenage years, but this one definitely went all the way to pro. Strap in. It's going to be long. TLDR at end. So just before my senior year in high school, I turned 18 and bought a car with my saved-up years of babysitting money. I'd have liked one sooner, but my mother absolutely refused. At 18, in my big act of teenage rebellion, I went out and bought one. A couple months later, Auntie Ahole suddenly left her job from several states away and moved in with us, without her car. It cost less if she waited six months until spring to get it shipped. Something about snowbird travel patterns. She was cheap and a user as well as an a-hole. As a result, I was expected to share my recently acquired car with Auntie A-hole until hers arrived. This seemed deeply unfair, but nonetheless it was agreed upon that she could use it for appointments and job interviews since I could take the school bus. I needed to be warned in advance because my bus stop was the second one of the route. It left a lot earlier than I needed to if driving direct, and I liked sleep. You may be wondering about now what this has to do with an alarm clock. Auntie Ahole is one of those people who likes to rile people up, then mock them for getting pissed off. She's always got a complaint, harsh word, and is feuding with somebody over something. Once she moved in with us, her complaint was my alarm clock. My room shared a wall with hers. The alarm was waking her mooching, unemployed, broke ass up every morning, and that pissed her off. Couldn't I just go to bed earlier so I didn't need an alarm clock? The morning schedule at our house went something in the ballpark of this. 5.30 a.m. my workaholic mother leaves for the office. 5.45 a.m. my alarm goes off if taking the bus to school. 6.15 a.m. my alarm goes off if driving to school. 6.15 I leave if taking the bus to school. 6.45 I leave if driving to school. Half past never. Auntie Ahole's unemployed Tushi needs to be anywhere. Auntie Ahole approached my workaholic mother about the horrific inconvenience of my using an alarm clock. Her solution was that my mother should wake me up every day at 5.30 before leaving. My mother told her to try earplugs or work it out between us. Workaholic mother was massively non-confrontational and wanted no part of an Auntie A-hole dispute. Auntie A-hole started sneaking into my room to unplug the clock after I fell asleep. I'm a hard sleeper, so she pulled this off a few times. I had a good number of tardies before I figured out it wasn't the new cat who initially got blamed. Woke up to see her standing over my bed one night. Creepy, I screamed like a banshee waking the whole house. She claimed sleepwalking, and my mother let her get away with that lame excuse. I endeavored to solve the problem myself with some super glue, not the brightest move I made. That house got sold with a bonus electric blue alarm clock, and Auntie A-hole started turning the alarm off instead of unplugging it. So I started sleeping with my alarm clock tucked behind my pillow. 
No way Auntie A-Hole could do anything to it without waking me now. She was pissed at having not gotten her way, and never let anything go ever. Auntie A-Hole's next move was to get up when the alarm went off and race into the only bathroom with a shower. It was closer to her room than mine, so she always beat me there. She'd stash magazines in there to sit on the commode reading until right around 6.20. This is after the school bus has left, but still before I need to leave driving direct. Once I was taking a very rushed shower, she'd steal my keys and take my car wherever the hell the unemployed go to drive around all day. She claimed that I just wasn't paying attention when she said she needed the car. She wasn't telling me. When my mother wasn't around, she made snide remarks that if she was woken up, she had just as much right to the bathroom as I did. I could solve this problem by not waking her up. In addition to this, she would take my car evenings and weekends always right before I had babysitting gigs. It never returned with more than fumes in the gas tank. She had to call roadside assistance twice for running out of gas because she'd guessed wrong on how far she could get on fumes. Needless to say, I was pissed. Also massively inconvenienced and a lot poorer. I had beg friends for last-minute rides or take a cab. She continued to blame me, and my mother stayed out of it. We got into a cat-and-mouse game with my keys where I eventually kept them on me at all times, even in the shower. This was an old car some years back. No electronic keys were harmed. The keys came in the shower with me because the counter wasn't enough to stop her from pulling the bathroom lock, pocket door, trivial, and coming in while I was showering to take them. Again, creepy. This eventually resulted in her asking in advance to borrow my car for a job interview. That probably wasn't. She went to the key shop and got my car keys copied. The next day, my keys safely back in my possession, she pulls the shower stunt again. She did it a lot even when she wouldn't take my car. Auntie A-hole was an A-hole. I head out to the driveway keys in hand, and my car's not there. Legit thought she'd hot-wired it until I got home and it showed no signs of tampering. I'm not much for poking the bear, but it was time to have this out. Auntie A-hole quite smugly admitted to copying the key, called me a selfish idiot who didn't know how to share, and many other unfortunate things I don't remember exactly. She wasn't giving it back. What was I going to do? I warned her that car was mine and she did not have permission to use it ever again. This was a bridge too far for me. There would be consequences. She laughed in my face. The next morning my car was not in the driveway. I'd expected this. My best friend's dad was a cop. I was practically a fixture in his house for a decade, and he was the closest thing I had to a father figure due to my own deadbeat dad. So I gave him a call utterly distraught that the car I've worked so hard to get has been stolen from my driveway. He's very sympathetic. Did I mention my car had low jack? It was actually a very nice car back when it was new anyway. We do all the reporting and whatever it takes for the cops to find it with low jack. By mid-afternoon, they'd found it in the parking lot of an outlet mall. I don't know what the full details of the encounter were, as I've heard multiple versions of this part of the story over the years. She had some kind of idiot tizzy on them upon being accused of theft, including a tussle with an officer. It ended in charges of grand theft auto, resisting arrest, assaulting an officer, and some kind of license-related thing because she'd never switched it to her new state of residence. Don't throw a idiot tizzy at a cop. They don't like it much. <laughs> As this all took some time, she didn't get arraigned that day. As her unemployed broke ass had horrid credit and little money, she couldn't make bail. As I deleted her answering machine message begging my mother to come bail her out, my workaholic mother didn't even notice she was gone for almost a week. Once workaholic mommy did notice, I explained that my car had been stolen and I called the cops. I was handling the situation myself like she suggested. The look of dawning horror was amazing. Then she shrugged and went back to avoiding all confrontation. Auntie A-hole served two weeks in county lockup until she took a plea deal. I suspect they slow walked her paperwork a bit. What happened after was glorious revenge. Auntie Ahole's remaining savings were used up on all the fines and court fees, so she finally got around to shipping her car and engaging in a job hunt. One problem, she was previously a teacher. She'd yet to get her certification in her new state. Now she had a rap sheet and was unable to pass the background check. Whoops, time for a new career as a telemarketer. Auntie Ahole didn't bother me much after that. I learned years later she only went after kids hard, and I had proved enough of an adult she realized there were consequences for her actions. We spent the next few months ignoring each other before I headed to college. And that's how a dispute over an alarm clock ended Auntie A-Hole's teaching career. The next one is a petty revenge story. Years ago I worked at McDonald's. A lady came through the drive through and was pretty rude when she ordered though, that's pretty normal. She pulled up to the window and had a gift card she wanted to pay with. The gift cards just swiped on the debit credit machines, but 90% of the time people would swipe the mag strip the wrong way, 
or swipe to fast, or even try and insert it despite there being no chip. So it became habit to just ask people for their gift card so that I could swipe it for them. When I asked her, though, she was offended and started going on like, Do you think I'm an idiot? You think I don't know how to swipe a gift card? Give me the ducking machine. Fine, no problem. Rather than press gift card on the POS, I pressed debit credit. So sure enough, when she did swipe it, it wouldn't work. I switch it over to gift card on the register, asked her if I could give it a try, and then it worked for me. Made my day and probably ruined hers. So stupid and so petty, but I would do it again in a heartbeat. The next one is a malicious compliance story. I'm a customer services manager for a very large entertainment slash broadband company. Part of my job is listening to calls raised off to my by my agents in relations to complaints, etc. One of my agents had a customer on the line going mental about her daughter's phone and broadband services being restricted for not paying. Customer claims the last person she spoke to said her bill would be cleared and she didn't have to pay. So I listened to that call and the customer is awful from the get-go. Making fun of the advisor's name, the name being Merlin, she was making jokes about her being a wizard and how stupid her name was mainly shouting at her for over an hour about how we've committed fraud because we won't read her daughter's bank details out on the call to her. She then starts going mad when the advisor tells her we couldn't take payment, because three different credit cards were declined on the account in three different months. Abuse goes on for 1H45 mins, and I feel so bad for the advisor at this point. Customer starts going mental that her daughter never has credit cards, again that we've committed fraud and she's coming to the agent's call center to find her. When the agent asks how we could possibly have committed fraud, the customer puts her foot in it, goes into a rage, and then tells her she let her daughter, who's only 17, go into the store and take the broadband contract with us, and the customer knew she had to be over 18, how it was our fault and blah blah for not doing our checks, and so on. Her daughter came on the line screaming just as bad as her too. Our customers need to be 18 plus to have contracts with us. We run basic debt checks to see if they have defaulted accounts with us, but nothing more. After raising the account off to the fraud team, I had the pleasure of calling them back to tell them they were cancelled with immediate effect. Of course she started screaming at me until I told her I wasn't here to be screamed at, it clearly wasn't up for discussion, and that I'd be hanging up. If she'd been nice, and not acted like she was on a pedestal and untouchable, then the services wouldn't have been cancelled. Don't you love when loud-mouthed Karens shoot themselves in the foot? The next one is an entitled people story. My mom has five kids and I'm the middle child who is 19. When I was eight, she got a job three hours away. She leaves for four days usually and comes back for two. It was my responsibility to clean and watch the two younger siblings, and my older siblings basically just had to stay home so this arrangement was legal. I've always been the black sheep. For example, my older sister got her dream haircut and highlights on her 11th birthday. My little sister is allowed to fix her own hair. I wasn't allowed to have a haircut until I was 15. I had to write four pages to convince her to let me since it was way past my waist, and I didn't want a salon, so money wasn't the problem. Anyway, because I raised my siblings, I was never able to do clubs, do sports, go to games, go to dances, get a job, etc. When I applied for college in 2021, my mom said I could only go to community college. I rebelled and chose the university 25 minutes from home since I got a grant that allowed me to go for free. My mom tells my younger siblings they don't have to listen to me, clean, or respect me. My little brother is 15 and doesn't even know how to work the washing machine. Every time I cook for them, it's not good enough. Every time I politely ask him to do anything, he calls me an idiot and my mom lets him. I'm not allowed to disrespect them, so it's unprovoked. Since they don't respect me at all, I decided I was leaving this August. My mom is still furious. She keeps calling me a selfish narcissist for making her life harder. The icing on the cake, though. She wants me to pay her since I'm moving. Again. I can't have a job until I move out. I've been making money for my dorm by babysitting a family friend's kids and cleaning my aunt's house on the days my mom is home. Anyway, she and I were on our way to Target so I could get some things when she said she needed my money I made. I asked why, and she said it's because she raised me. I told her it's her job as a parent, and then she replied by saying she could have gotten rid of me and wanted me to thank her for not getting rid of me. I could not believe it. Since I didn't give her my money, tensions are high. She keeps saying to her friends that I'm making her life bad. Entitled mothers are so difficult. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We'll see you again tomorrow.